Ready? You wave to the crowd, wave to the audience. There you go, good bird. It's my helper. Hi, I'm Joe. Today I'm going to go over how to clean the exhaust valves on a 600 CFI Polaris engine. In particular, it's in this RMK, so I'll show you how to get the plastic out of the way. But for most cases, 600 CFI exhaust valves are all the same. So watch me. I'll show you step by step how to get the job done and lay out all the tools for you. It's a good idea to do it about every 1500 miles or so. It really robs a lot of horsepower and it's not hard to do. So watch me, I'll show you how to get the job done. I've got all the tools laid out that you're gonna need for this job here. Um, I'll just kind of go through them so you guys can get them out beforehand, save a little bit of time. I've got a pick, I've got red Loctite, and a flat razor, a pair of needle nose, it's a T40 Torx, Got new exhaust valve gaskets for the housing there. Got my side cutters. Got my ratchet here. An extension with a 10 millimeter. You know I need a deep well, but um, I kind of like to have them. I've also got a half inch socket here too. This is for taking off um, the bolts for the steering shaft, which you'll see. Also got a 10 millimeter ratcheting wrench. It works really nice for getting the covers off the exhaust valves. One bolt in particular. So. Um, other than that, moving on, I've got the scotch bright pad, some heavy sandpaper, steel wool, and of course carburetor cleaner. This is pretty much what you need to get the entire job done. You may have some tools of your own that work a little better, but um, I discovered this is pretty much it. So, hope this helps. Let's move on. Alright, step one. we got to get the side panels off, both sides. I'm sure you're probably familiar with how to get your side panel off by now since your oil goes back here. But if you're not, it's just these two uh, clips here and your rubber strap and you pop it out. So. Set it off to the side, you get your other one off, and we'll move on to getting the hood off. Now that we got the side panels off, we're gonna go ahead and get these plastic push pins. I always give them a little shot of WD-40. It helps to loosen them up, slides out much nicer. I use side cutters, they work really good for popping them out. Just kind of dip underneath them. And it works really nice. You can save it for the next time. As you can see, there's two Torx bolts on each side of the steering stem. These hold the hood on as well as those plastic push pins that you just saw me take out. So I'm gonna go ahead and take these out. They come out real easy using a T40 Torx head. There you go, we'll move on to the next step. We're over here on the exhaust side of the sled now. We've got all of the connectors holding the hood off so we can lift the hood up. But first we gotta unhook this wiring harness clip here. This is what runs your gauge pod on your dash. So there's just a clip on the back side of it here and you just push down on that and it releases it and you can pull it apart. And then we'll go ahead and slide the hood off. It's just got two pins on the front. I'll show you where those are at and we'll move on to the next step. All right, now that we got that wiring harness unclipped, it's time to go ahead and take the hood completely off. The front of the hood has a little bit of a slot that fits inside of a, another groove here on your belly pan. So when you take the hood off, make sure you lift from the back and slide it down the nose about an inch and it comes off. Just lift up, slide it down, it comes right off. It's pretty easy. You can see here, this is the exhaust valve cover. There's one on each side of uh, for each cylinder. Each one has four bolts that hold it on. It's a 10 millimeter head. I like to use a deep well 10 millimeter socket or even a ratcheting wrench works pretty good too. Just whatever works best for you. So we're gonna go ahead and get these four bolts out of each side to start with. And then we're gonna go ahead and move on to the next step after that. You can see this hose going into the exhaust valve housing right here. This needs to be removed on both, uh, both sides. Little clamp right here, just use your needle nose, pull that up out of the way, like that. You should be able to pull the hose just off. You might have to break it loose a little bit. They're a little stiff sometimes. And there you go, that's off. If you don't have power tools, that's okay. You can just use a regular ratchet. I'm gonna go ahead and use uh, an air ratchet today just uh, to save me a little bit of time.
Now I'm going to go ahead and get the rest of them out. I may not be able to use my air ratchet for every one of them because of space, but that's okay. Okay, I got the side off that's on your clutch side uh, cylinder, and the bottom bolt right there is it's pretty tough to get to. I ended up using a ratcheting uh, 10 millimeter wrench that I uh, brought in from the clutch side of the sled and uh, kind of hung it down uh, parallel with the uh, steering shaft here. That was the easiest way to get this bottom one out. So uh, now that I got this out, I'm going to go ahead and take the cover off. It's got a spring behind it, so be gentle when you're pulling the cover off. And you can see the spring right here. That actually holds pressure on your exhaust valve uh, to keep it from opening too soon, actually. You can see your exhaust bellow here, this orange thing. Okay, we're going to go ahead and remove the spring from that right there and set it to the side. Okay, we've got the uh, clutch side cylinder's uh, exhaust valve loose, the housing is loose, all the bolts are out. Um, there's one uh, problem here, you can't pull the entire exhaust valve out, it runs into the steering shaft here. So there's two bolts that hold the upper housing for the steering shaft. We're going to go ahead and take those out, those are half inch bolts, I've got my air ratchet here. Now that that's loose, I'm able to pull it back far enough by itself to where I can go ahead and slide this exhaust valve out. It takes a little bit of finagling, but just give it some time and be patient and it'll come out. Now we've got the entire exhaust valve removed from the sled. You can see it is. It's pretty dirty. Um, I've seen them much worse, but uh, definitely time for cleaning at about 1,500 miles. The sled, uh, I use Klotz Technoplate um, TC3. It uh, passes all qualifications uh, for warranty and such, and it's a really good oil. Leaves them a little dirtier than I've noticed than other brands, but that's okay. It gives me a peace of mind that there's plenty of lubricant um, to keep the sled going for a long, long time. So uh, anyway, you can see the gasket right here. I'm going to go ahead and remove that gasket. I've got new ones to put on. They're very inexpensive, so just go ahead and put new ones on. Discard that. Make sure that where you removed your gasket from that there's no debris left behind. If so, we'll take a flat edge razor and kind of smooth that off. But uh, sometimes the gasket will stick to the engine, uh, the cylinder itself on the engine, and you may have to pull it off of there and also equally check the, the surface and um, take a razor blade and clean it. Make sure it's ready for your new for your new gasket. Okay, moving on. Now we're ready to clean it. I've got a few tools that I like to use for uh, cleaning the exhaust valve. Um, one is a pick, works really great for getting inside these grooves here. Next is a scotch bright pad and steel wool, they work really great. You can also use a carburetor cleaner of your choice, works really good, kind of loosens up all that gunk. And you can also use that carburetor cleaner underneath the bellow here to get that cleaned up, make it all fresh and new. So we're going to start with the pick here, just kind of get up in here and get some of these carbon buildup that you see. Chisel that out. You don't have to be too gentle. It's pretty strong. So once we get all that carbon cleaned out, move over to the next one, do the same thing. What's most important is this half moon piece right here is where your rings ride um, inside your cylinder. So this is your actual valve part right here that you need to clean so what I like to do is loosen it up with a little bit of carburetor cleaner, take your Scotch-Brite pad to it. It gets the really tough stuff off to begin with. And you can take your steel wool, finish it up. You can really see it starting to shine right there. So do that around the entire side. And like I said, clean underneath your bellow. Get it really good and uh, spray a little bit of carburetor cleaner down the shaft there. It's a one piece design. Get that all cleaned up, you should be good to go. I got them clean as I feel like they need to be. Um, the places that are the most important to get clean are the top part of your valve here because it hits right there and if that's built up it won't allow it to, sh um, to uh, open up all the way. 
so you actually lose horsepower in that manner right there. The other place that you want to be most concerned about um, to get clean is this upper lip right here of this stopper because it's equally the same. It'll hit. If it builds up up there, it'll stay open like that and it won't, uh, or I'm sorry, it won't uh, open up all the way. So make sure you get that top clean, that top, your sides, this dish. Really in, in its entirety, it needs to be cleaned very well. I even went, um, went a step further and got a little bit of heavy sandpaper and kind of worked, uh, worked that heavy carbon with the carburetor cleaner and the sandpaper. Turned out really nice. Kind of wiped this down with some steel wool. Looks pretty good. I like to blow this out with an air gun um, just to make sure that it's free flowing. And uh, other than that, I'm going to go ahead and throw, throw the new gasket. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put the gasket directly on this instead of putting it on the cylinder itself. Um, I'm going to go ahead and check this out, take a flat edge razor and uh, go ahead and clean it up. Make sure that <clears throat> that new gasket gets a really nice seal. But there's uh, no gasket sealer or anything, they just go on as a dry gasket. Alright, so we'll go ahead and put that on and move to the next step. I've got the exhaust valve all cleaned and ready to go again. Um, I went ahead and put the new um, gasket on there. Like I said before, it's a dry fit, so don't have to worry about any gasket sealer. Just go ahead and place it on there. Um, just to show you, the reassembly I'm sure you'll be able to handle. I'll talk a little bit about the cap though. When the cap goes back on, what I like to do is take the spring and fit it right there on the end of your valve. <clears throat> and make sure when your cap goes on that your spring sits nicely inside of that cup at the end of the the cover right there so kind of line them up and you'll get a good feel there'll be a little bit of pressure as you push down right here go ahead and put that down right there and you'll see your four bolts that you took out in the beginning you've got two short ones here these short ones are specifically just to hold the cover to the exhaust valve body so they'll be the uppers Right here the exhaust valve is going to sit just like I'm holding it here so the short ones will go on top and bottom and the two long ones will go side to side like this and these will actually be held <clears throat> these will hold the housing onto the cylinder itself now remember there is torque specs for these and it's very light um, you're dealing with the aluminum pot metal and plastic so really when you tighten these down um, don't put very much force on it. As I can see, there's red Loctite on this, so I'm going to go ahead and replace it with one drop of red Loctite. And when you put these in, just snug them down. Um, I'm not going to look up or tell you the exact specs. Um, I'm sure they're all over the internet. But uh, either way, I always like to just make sure I don't put them very tight. Let the red Loctite do the holding of the bolt. So other than that, um, I think you guys will be able to handle it, and we'll go on to the next step. I'm going to go ahead and snug these two cover bolts down. I've got the red Loctite on them, so I'm going to put a little bit of tension on them, but not a lot. There is torque specs on the internet, I'm sure, that will show you how, but I've done them so many times I feel like just a good amount of tension. Let the red Loctite do the work, um, and they'll never back out on you. So now, I'm going to go ahead and put this on the sled. When it's on the sled, I'll have my two longer bolts that I'll put Loctite on, and they'll hold the, uh, the housing right onto the cylinder. All right, I'm ready to go ahead and get the exhaust valve back inside the cylinder. I'm going to take my flat razor here and just clean that face right there. Make sure it's nice and clean so my new gasket has a good seal. Got that clean there. I'll maybe use a little bit of steel wool kind of run it around the outside, rough it up, cleans it real nice. Gets a really good seal. If you get any debris inside of this slot, the best thing to do is kind of clean it out, whether it's with your finger or, or maybe a rag. You don't want any of that steel wool to get down inside that shaft and affect, uh, affect the movement of your exhaust valve. Okay, got my exhaust valve all back together in its housing, gaskets on. I'm going to go ahead and slide it in. It'll only go in one way. There is a right side up. If you flip it, if you put it in wrong, it will not allow the exhaust valve to go all the way back into place. But um, I've got it in right. 
when you get it back in, you'll have a little bit of spring tension there. You can feel that. That's perfectly normal. I'm going to go ahead and put a little red Loctite on my housing bolts here. Get that threaded in. Drop there. Get that set in place too. I like to start them with uh, just start turning them in by hand. Get them started. Then we'll go ahead and finish them off with a uh, 10 millimeter socket. I don't suggest using air ratchet or anything like that. These are very fragile um, bolts and you kind of want to turn them in by hand. Um, like I said, there are torque specs for these, but I just put them in nice and snug and let the red Loctite um, keep them from backing out. Okay, um, don't forget to hook up your pressure line up on top right there. That just slides right back on where you had it. Use your needle nose pliers to put your clamp back. I'm going to go ahead and tighten these down. All right, I've got both of my exhaust valves back in place. Everything's tight. Hoses are connected, clamps are in place. Like I said before, I went ahead and snugged these down. Um, not very, very hard, but uh, evenly, you know. I went and tightened one side and I tightened the other to where they both went in nice and even, very snug. The red lock title hold those bolts from backing out. Like I said, if you want to, you can look up the torque specs. Um, they're very light and you can get the torque wrench and make sure that it's to specifications. Um, don't forget after you've got them both back in to go ahead and bolt up the housing, the block for your steering uh, post, which is right here. It takes a quarter inch. We're going to go ahead and tighten that down and uh, start wrapping it up. We're ready to get the hood back on. Just make sure that the nose plate piece here fits in nicely and make sure that the air box intake also fits on nicely as you close the hood. You can kind of see when you look up underneath the hood if your air box um, sleeve is fitting inside of the, um, one another nicely. That's what you really need to look for so you get a good clean seal. The other thing is, is don't forget to hook up the um, wiring harness that you unhooked earlier. The sled will start without it. You'll just notice that you don't have any gauges um, and that's, that's what it is. You need to make sure that's connected. You can see here what I was mentioning about the uh, air intake. These two need to seal up. This is your air box here and this is the intake on the hood. So you can kind of see I've got some adjustment here, but it's easier to grab the box itself and it kind of rocks back and forth. And you want to get that hood, you want it to fit in there just like that. So you can kind of see there, it's down in there. And when I bolt it down with those Torx bolts up top, It'll hold it in there nice and snug. Just make sure that's in there. You don't want it to be sucking any snow. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and get the Torx bolts back in place. This will hold the hood down, create a nice seal for your air box there that you just uh, saw me line up. Go ahead and get this nice and snug. And then don't forget your pla plastic push pin here. We'll go ahead and put that in down here. The uh, cowling that goes around uh, the gas tank actually goes under the hood, so make sure that's in place. The pin should go through both of them. Push it in, and it's back together. Thanks for watching. I hope that process helped a few guys out. Uh, feel free to like and subscribe. My name is Joe. Hope you guys have a good season riding, and don't forget to check out some of my other videos.
Thanks for watching. Please feel free to like and subscribe. Check out some of my other videos. <laughs> Thanks for watching. <laughs> Hi, my name is Joe. I'm happy to help. <laughs> Hi, my name is Joe from Four Real Riders Guiding Service out of the UP of Michigan. My voice is so bad that this would be the worst time ever to make these videos. And that's why I'm not going to make this video today. I'm going to listen to my lovely wife. Take two. <laughs>